speaking of beards, uh, have you ever seen Russell Crowe's beard in Gladiator? That's right. <laughs> Russell Crowe had a beard phase. Isn't that a isn't that a good tie-in right there? Good job, man. Thanks. That's all I got. And that's the last tie-in I have. So I am definitely entertained. <laughs> I know. Hopefully, we'll see if anyone caught our little spoiler tag at the end of the uh, last episode. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I didn't even catch it. Yeah, okay. I just put, like, little quotes at the end, and oh, so yeah. uh, we'll what, see if anyone... What was, the, what was the quote? Or do we... Or should we not give it away? No, I think we can give people, it away. People have to go back? I mean, I don't remember it, so... <laughs> <laughs> <If we had to. laughs> All right, somebody remind us and put it in the comments, because we don't remember what we put in our own video. <laughs> yeah, it was something like... I don't know how to be a good person or something like that oh, yeah. essentially yeah it's like oh yeah something about getting revenge no giving the republic back to the people <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> it was basically like every day i try to try my best and on the days i don't feel like it i do it anyway or something like that oh yeah so, something like that yeah. is that a quote from gladiator kind of yeah. is it like a quote from marcus aurelius or something no it's from gladiator that's from gladiator yeah oh, i don't remember that huh yeah or something like it's basically like when you fall short or it's like yeah you, you strive for perfection or something and yeah. then when you fall short of that you're great or something yeah, like okay. that All right but the only life quote i remember was am i not merciful <laughs> am i not <laughs> merciful? <laughs> so if anyone hasn't figured out yet we're talking about gladiator yeah, we're today. talking about gladiator <laughs> and uh how many quotes can be pulled from that? How many movie? Qu- quotes can a <laughs> quote man quote? Yeah, that's what we're doing today. <laughs> yeah, when's the last time you've seen it? Um, gosh, I think it's actually been maybe five plus years. Okay, you since need to I've seen that, it, man. I should. Yeah. Um, you dropped the ball. It definitely, it definitely deserves to be rewatched. Well, I don't know. I've watched it so many times. Oh, okay. I do feel like I remember it really well. That's probably true. Yeah. Um, in fact, I want to say a couple things just about watching it. Mm-hmm. One, when I was 18, yeah, or 19, when I was like 19, I took a gladiator it a, phase. I, well, I was really into gladiator. <laughs> Became a gladiator. I, I took an anatomy class at City College, mm. and the anatomy professor on the first day of class, he said, everybody needs to go around the room. And there's like 30 students or something. Everybody go around the room, tell me your favorite movie and your name. Oh, okay. And I was the first person he pointed right at me, and he said, you, over there, go first. And I said, my favorite movie is Gladiator, and my name's Brandon. And he said, my favorite movie is Gladiator, too. You get an A+. <laughs> and, and, I, and I got an A in that class. Wow. <laughs> so okay. Gladiator gives you good grades. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Find out who the fellow classy people are. <laughs> start, yeah. start dropping that at parties. <laughs> um, I thought I thought it was going to be like, he was going to have you watch Gladiator and be like, okay, what order did you cut here? <laughs> <laughs> I used to I used to have friends show me football clips of mm. injuries and be like, what happened in that injury? It's like, well, he broke his face. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, like, He'll never walk again. Like, like, he's gonna, yeah, he's going to regret that sport <laughs> 10 years when he has osteoarthritis, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. That's a concussion. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. That's super funny. But then I think also when I was dating my wife, I don't think I'd married her yet. I think we were dating. Mm. And she told me that she heard me talking about Gladiator or something. And so she went home and just watched it alone by herself. And she really liked it. Okay. And I was like, I should marry her. <laughs> that's a pretty good sign. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone takes any time out of their day to like pursue interests you're into, I think that's a pretty yeah. good sign of attraction yeah (laughs) that's awesome yeah so yeah we're talking about gladiator and you were the one who initiated the gladiator movie picking yeah uh why did you choose gladiator it's a good question i don't remember yeah that's (laughs) okay i mean i was looking through my 10 out of 10 movies and i was like i don't know none of them jumped out Mm. and i was like i need to add some more movies to this category Mm. and so i was thinking of movies that i didn't have on there that i needed to add Mm. and gladiator was had been one of them Mm. so Mm. yeah that and then i figured i don't think there was any other overlapping reasons but that's kind of the main one i feel like one of the things i like about gladiator is that it really is one of those top iconic roman like Mm. movies yeah you know i think gladiator and I would I would also say Ben Hur, okay, as yeah. an older movie, but I feel like those are some of my main movies in my mind that I think of as like Rome, <laughs> like this is the glory of Rome, you know? <laughs> yeah, I could see that. 
Yeah. yeah, the amount of like atmosphere. I was just looking at some of the sets, you know, the extras in the background. And it's mm. just like they went all out to like make this, you know, just totally a lived in place, you know, mm-hmm. despite a lot of the people looking pretty English. But like, yeah, I always feel like <laughs> Romans in movies are actually just British people. <laughs> it's like, eh, they're not Italian, they're British. <laughs> yeah, you know, pretty fair skin. Like Marcus Aurelius, like this old, like. Well, yeah. it's the same guy that played Dumbledore. Yeah, actually, yeah, Dumbledore. The, so in a few of the Harry Potter, he's an old British wizard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I was like, ah, that kind of pulled me out of it. But other than that, it was but like, I think he was Gladiator first. I don't know. Do you think he was right. Dumbledore first, or do you think he was oh. Marcus Aurelius first, like acting wise? Oh, for I sure. I think Gladiator came before yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know. I don't remember when Harry Dumbledore. Potter won. Yeah, yeah, he is kind of scarred <laughs> as Dumbledore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, can't unsee that once you see it. <laughs> can't see that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um, same thing with uh oh what's his name again joaquin phoenix yeah right he definitely in my mind is always like joker the the evil emperor guy which i'm forgetting oh, his name um but it's i thought it started with a d but now i can't remember yeah, uh, yeah, I should. I I literally watched it on Sunday, so probably I should... like Demarcus or something. <laughs> uh, Instead of Marcus, really, Dem- Demarcus Rulius, Demarcus Rulius. Um, oh dang, I can't remember. Oh no, wait, no, it was it. Uh, um, with a C. Maximus was the guy. It was the C. Oh dang it! What was his name? I can't remember. Uh, Ch- 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 Quintus. Commodus. No. no. Oh. No, no, that was a different guy. Yeah, there's Qu- Quintus, which Quintus. was like the the lieutenant guy who was betrayed him. Yeah, that's right. Like his his thing. But yeah, I think it it might have been Commodus. Might have been Commodus. I can't remember now. Yeah, it, well, it was with the C for sure because I actually went and I looked up the line of Roman emperors, mm. um, like around that time, and yeah, it was. I think it's Commodus. Okay, we'll go with that for now. Yeah, we'll go with that until we look it up afterwards. But when I looked up wrong. the the line of emperors, it was weird because, like. It actually, there was an emperor in between Marcus Aurelius and Commodus. Oh, really? So I don't know what that was about. It, oh. Obviously, history is maybe a little bit maybe different. Maybe that was but Maximus. It wasn't. Mm. <laughs> I checked, but yeah, yeah. It was like some emperor I didn't recognize. Mm, so maybe someone else like ruled in Marcus Aurelius' stead for a little bit or something. Interesting. Or maybe he was too young, like Commodus, and so they aged him up for the movie or something. Interesting. Very interesting. But uh, I feel yeah. like there's sort of a familiarity or a repetition that occurs between Marcus Aurelius and King Solomon. Because you kind of had this wise king leader who ruled, you know, fairly well. Then you had Marcus Aurelius, kind of the same guy, right? He's sort of known for, like, his common sense wisdom, you know, meditations, and people, like, really like him today even, you know? Yeah, people ring songs, read Psalm Solomon, and then (laughs) go and read uh, meditations. Meditations, you know? Yeah. But then, same thing, you kind of had this, like, crazy wild child son that just totally like ruined the whole kingdom for you i was like oh yeah that's a bummer it's kind of like the laws of physics and opposite and equal reaction you yeah know? <laughs> like if you have a great king whatever the sun is everybody get out <laughs> get out, get out <laughs> now <laughs> like, get while the getting's good the wise king marcus really has died everybody run <laughs> right yeah it is kind of weird how the pendulum swings like that for sure yeah you know yeah. yeah so i'm just gonna go invest in a bunch of stocks that are doing really badly and then they'll do good <laughs> i don't know i don't know how that works <laughs> use yeah. that to your advantage yeah yeah one thing that kind of stood out to me which was interesting was um all the parts of the caribbean music in it you know <laughs> what i totally agree no They're... literally it is i think because i think what happened i was reading and well so hans zimmer did gladiator right and then apparently i was reading and apparently like in a lot of the pirates of the caribbean music Mm -hmm. they were using temporary tracks from um gladiator oh and so they because like the director liked that music or whatever so they're using temporary tracks so then they just took it and changed it a little bit but it was like originally that music that they were like just playing you know because they have to screen it right i didn't didn't know that history yeah because i've thought that i've listened to hans zimmer like playlist music Mm -hmm. and i've thought to myself oh it's pirates of the caribbean playing and i check it i'm like gladiator Mm -hmm. i've totally like thought that i didn't know that there was i didn't know why why that was that's so interesting and so then they pulled hans zimmer on for the second parts of the caribbean Uh and they like took his music back kind of you know wow in a weird way 
That's super interesting. So yeah, you'll hear like the main Pirates of the Caribbean theme song mm -hmm. with like a little bit less flourish in mm -hmm. Gladiator. That's so funny. No Isn't way. that weird? Yeah. Yeah. That's super interesting. <laughs> so it's just like totally just ripped out into like, you know, I don't know, this big Hollywood movie that Disney did ripped off Gladiator. Yeah. Like, and I don't know what the legality of all that is. It's probably fine, but. I, I guess that, I mean, yeah, because it, it's, it's like who owns the music. Mm -hmm. It's like if it's Hans Zimmer making it, it, can you just be like, well, hey, I made both things, so like it's all cool? Yeah. Or is he it didn't like work on the first Pirates of the Caribbean? So. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So he came in like on the second one, and then, so yeah, they. Were, I don't know. I guess they they changed the the temp track enough mm. from Gladiator to like be original. I guess it had to be ten percent different. <laughs> yeah, whatever the ratio is. Yeah. I don't know. So I thought that was pretty weird, mm. as far as because I did the same thing. I was like, I don't, I don't know. There's a part where i like looked away or something and i was like hearing music and i'm like wait i'm watching gladiator why is there pirates of the caribbean coming mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. but yeah obviously the rest of the music's great too mm. little enya and enya yeah, yeah. <laughs> going to heaven yeah going to elysium right going to the thing that mark damon went up to who matt damon oh the ring <laughs> the ring thing <laughs> yeah oh my gosh that movie i remember when that movie came out mm -hmm. i thought to myself wait this is that theme song from gladiator what does that mean <laughs> then i learned that it was like oh it's like a mm -hmm. greek word for heaven or something like that so yeah the, like yeah. afterlife or whatever yeah or the, yeah it's like same thing as like valhalla right i think so yeah, i don't know like exactly. the, the field of glory where it's all like, the warriors go when they die yeah that's right yeah yeah interesting yeah what'd you think of like that i don't know that afterlife scenario yeah, I mean, you know, it's like the iconic hand waving through the the <laughs> grains of the field, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's good because they showed this idea of, you know, he's going to die and go be with his family. And mm -hmm. I think that that was a really strong thing because sometimes you get movies where main characters die and then it's like sad. Oh, they died. But you sort of want him to die. He because, wants to die. Yeah, he wants to die. He <laughs> wants to die. You kind of want him to die. Everybody wants him to die. Yeah. Um, People know. And, and that's because that's where he wants to go belong, you know, it's like with his family in the afterlife, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting because he makes a comment in the very beginning of the movie to like all of his soldiers, mm -hmm. you know, when he's giving them a little like prep talk. And he says, you know, if you find yourself like riding with your horse through a field, don't be afraid you've died and you're already in in heaven or whatever mm -hmm. it's like you know fear not and he kind of makes a joke out of it but then that's sort of like what he wants in the end is like he keeps envisioning the field and going through it and seeing his family and yeah. like wanting to be there you know yeah 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 it's mm -hmm. kind of a interesting like motivating factor in the movie you know mm -hmm. and it's like he has to find reasons or people give him reasons to like stay you know mm. after his family's gone yeah which is cool. It's like, you know, I think it's shows like how much he cares for his family in the story, which mm. is kind of cool. Mm. You know, it's like, that's where his life's tied up and in, into his, his family. So, yeah. Which is kind of counterintuitive because it seems like, you know, on the surface, it's like, oh, he did all these cool things and, you know, he was great in the, the arena and, you know, he dispatched an evil emperor. Like those are the real accomplishments, but like, those were just byproducts to like get him where he wanted to go. You I know? know. Yeah. It's like for him, he just wanted to like do what was right by Marcus Aurelius and then like die and be with his family. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. He's a pretty simple guy when it came down to it. Well, he also just wanted some hardcore revenge too. Cause there do was you think that, so? well, there was the whole statement when, you know, he's like, gladiator, take off your mask. And he's like, I am Maximus Decimus Meridius mm -hmm. and I will have my revenge in this life or the next. So he's like, okay, you know, yeah. I think he, I think he's like, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Maybe that was just an off the cuff comment, though. Maybe he was just pissed in that moment. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, no one tells me to take off my helmet. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna kill you for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that reveal is like so good from mm. like the actors, you know, and mm. just like see the emperor's face, just like, you know, what? <laughs> yeah. It's such a good like it's like oh this is bad <laughs> this is very bad yeah and just, i mean walking phoenix just did an insane job with that yeah, role he was very good in that role yeah, yeah. 
there's very few like villains that are just like man that's played to perfection but yeah that was one of them it was a very good villain you mm-hmm. really felt like this is a crazy person <laughs> Yeah. So it was like a legit crazy guy. <laughs> Which, it's kind of interesting. That was one of the things that kind of stuck out to me was, you know, it's like he kind of makes a statement in the movie where he's, you know, he's talking to Maximus and he's kind of like, you know, we're not that different. You, like, we both, like, kill people to get what we want, you know, <laughs> or, like, to achieve our ends. Oh, yeah. And it's like, it's kind of true, you know. It's like, mm. you know, he's he's being a gladiator out here just killing random people. Mm. to like achieve his ends of like killing the emperor or whatever Mm. you know avenging his family or doing whatever he needs to do you know Mm. and so he's like he's like i don't know he's like people but basically he just said people don't look on me favorably for it but they look on you favorably for killing people yeah you know know, i mean even when he was in a you know a soldier in in the army and he was a general Mm then it's like well yeah still same thing like oh everybody like respects you for killing people Mm -hmm. it's like why can't the other guy (laughs) kill people and get respect it's like well yeah yeah so yeah it is that weird thing it's like well well, okay what does respect actually boil down to it's like obviously Mm -hmm. the killing's not the part you know Mm. which i mean you can take whatever stance you want on that but um yeah there's like it's more like the manipulation maybe behind it that's Mm. like people look down on Mm. or disrespect more so than actually killing people Mm. (laughs) at least in that culture yeah Yeah, it's being sneaky it's being conniving it's being yeah well i think also it's like you know in in the sense of war i think people are more forgiving towards you know soldiers because it's like you're doing what you had to do and you were doing it to like for the betterment of like us like our country like we appreciate that Mm -hmm. versus you know commodus it's like well you're just killing people (laughs) for like personal gain you know like those people didn't deserve to die or like you know you you selfish killing yeah it was that was selfish killing (laughs) yeah versus maybe less selfish killing selfless killing depending on the context yeah you know yeah, which I mean, it kind of led me into actually one of the other things I'd been thinking about a little bit too, because um, I'm not obviously not a fan of killing, but uh, <laughs> as probably most people are, um, eh, it comes to go with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I don't want to kill people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I figured as much, yeah. Um, but yeah, like you know, I was kind of looking and just thinking about the whole gladiatorial system, you know, in mm-hmm. in general and like how that maintained and how that was part of like culture and you know you'd probably just take your like you know now you'd go take your kid to go see a baseball game back in the day you go take your kid to go see someone just get their head chopped off you know yeah and uh (laughs) but yeah it was you know it's like maximus is kind of seen as the hero for like thriving in this system Mm -hmm. right of like glad the gladiatorial system and kind of you know gaining glory and achievement there by being like skilled in arms but um, you know, to me, it's like, so yeah, he's presented as kind of the hero, but it's kind of, to me, there's, it's always interesting. Cause it's like, I think there's like, there's two ways of looking at things, you know, it's like, well, either, you know, okay, this is the bad guy. He's the hero, you know, cause he's in this, but, but that's like, according to the system that's at play, you know? Mm-hmm. And so the point I'm making with this is that usually there's like a third way to like transcend a broken system where there's only like two options. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of researching some of the gladiatorial stuff and I found like one of these uh, saints that's actually in the Fox's Book of Martyrs too. Um, What was his name? Telemachus. Telemachus. And And so he was a, he was like the saint slash martyr Hmm. who um, went uh, like during one of the big gladiatorial games, he went out and stood between two gladiators. Oh wait, like, I've t- read about this guy before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably in Fox's book, Fox's book of Martyrs. Well, yeah, I have read that but, a couple times. But yeah, but yeah, so he goes out and he tells like the people, or he tells the gladiators, like, "Hey, don't kill each other. You don't have to do this." Mm-hmm. And so then the crowd gets pissed and then goes and stones him in yeah. the in the arena. And then the emperor actually hears about it and is like kind of disgusted. Yeah. And then outlaws like gladiatorial games. Yeah. So it's like this weird thing where. You know, like to me, that's like true heroism, you know, yeah. where it's like you didn't even achieve the glory of like living either to like mm. see your work done, but you mm. like stood on conviction and like took this leap of faith. And then all of a sudden, your actions have these like rippling effects that, like, yeah, you're not even just winning in the system, you're just completely 
changing the whole system. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think he revealed how corrupt and evil the hearts of the people were, Mm. you know, like, like basically this guy just wants to stand up and speak for what he believes in. And Mm -hmm. people are so annoyed at that. (laughs) And they're just like, we're just going to kill you. Cause we like, we, we want to have our entertainment. Yeah. It's like if somebody said, you can't watch the Super Bowl this year, so we're going to turn off the TV. And you were like, no. And you went to like a murder rampage and killed them, you know? You're yeah. like, whoa, something's really wrong with you. That's super yeah. messed up, you know? Yeah, the system is so, clearly like, yeah, the incentives are weird. Yeah, so I could I could understand the emperor seeing that and being like, whoa, my people are really dark. <laughs> like, this is really, it's like, ugh, that's disgusting people. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah, maybe Go touch should, grass. <laughs> yeah, maybe we shouldn't be feeding them, like, murder entertainment, you know? Yeah, seriously, yeah. Maybe, that, maybe that's perpetuating a cycle of violence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's like, to me, that's, it is interesting because it's like, you know, he the maximus's character doesn't like really like he's kind of selfish in his own ways like not mm. that that it's necessarily like the worst thing ever but like i don't it doesn't seem like to me in my book he's not some huge hero you know mm. he kind of like goes after his own personal gains like he's not really yeah. trying to change the system like he wants to kill the em- emperor because it's like he betrayed him and yeah. betrayed rome but it's like it's it mostly feels personal <laughs> i guess yeah like it's his personal, <clears throat> his personal, like, you know, family revenge story mm-hmm. that also has, you know, nationwide emperor, all of the Mediterranean, European continent area mm-hmm. implications for mm-hmm. who's emperor, basically. Yeah. But that's almost like a secondary part for in his personal yeah. vendetta that he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, his he has his reasons for doing things. And it's like, it's just nice that it happens to line up with you know things he maybe believes or mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. but yeah <laughs> mm. he's not trying to like like he doesn't strike me as like a super like noble person mm. if that makes sense mm. like i think that's how like the marketing is portrayed and like people remember the movie but i don't know that well i mean i think he was noble in the sense because because you know marcus aurelius entrusts him with the power of the empire Mm -hmm. and i think his reason for entrusting him with the power was because he knew that he didn't want the power he knew that like i can give you the power of the empire and it's not going to corrupt you because you don't like seek that stuff Mm -hmm. versus commodus it's like he was constantly seeking it and it corrupted him and he was like totally maniacal evil with it you know yeah so i think that that's the noble aspect of him is kind of that George Washington story, you know? Here's the power of the nation. Everybody wants you to be king, but you have like the power, the the self control essentially to like say no to like really mm-hmm. high levels of power. And I think that that is honorable. That's the the Hobbit power, right? It's the Hobbit power, right? Say no to the power of the universe. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's like one of the really big like decisions to have. You know, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, it's that's it, true. Yeah, it was. You know, he was he. He had that character about him before the moment came. You know, like that's who he was as a person. That's like who he chose to be and how he lived his life. Mm -hmm. And so Marcus really saw that in him and like gave him power. But then it's like he didn't really have an opportunity to actually fulfill or do anything with it because it was taken away by, you know, this other guy's greed. Yeah. So it's like maybe if he had lived it out and been like, I'm coming back to Rome with all the power. (laughs) And it's like, ooh, actually, I like the, you know, it's like maybe maybe he would have fallen into the corruption or yeah. something, but, you know, it's like he almost didn't get the chance. Yeah. So I don't know. That is interesting. Yeah. Well, he got like a new kind of power, which is kind of ironic, you know, because he becomes a slave, but then it's like, you know, there's even a quote in the movie or whatever. He's like, today I saw a gladiator, you know, hold more sway than the emperor of Rome mm-hmm. or whatever, you know? That's what it means to be an influencer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right when you have like the yeah presidents tweeting out about celebrities nowadays mm-hmm. you know and it's like yeah man who's really got the seat you the, know? but the gladiators were the og <laughs> fitness influencers <laughs> before instagram was cool yeah right yeah they were kind of like celebrities it's funny yeah. i mean even the scene where she goes and visits them and she's like i'm here for my my pimp basically or whatever you know right yeah and so like yeah but yeah i know it's um 
Yeah, so he does get like a lot of power, obviously, you know, and he's like pulling Commodus' strings, like mm -hmm. as he, you know, gains more popularity and stuff. And it's like he's yeah. able to manipulate or influence his actions a lot in a lot of ways, you know, mm -hmm. and get under his skin and stuff, <laughs> which yeah. is played super well, you know, it's just like his descent into into madness and totally yeah all that totally yeah. <laughs> what do you think about movies just in general mm -hmm. where the main character dies at the end love them you love them <laughs> no i don't. yeah i think they're usually pretty good <clears throat> yeah you like that because mm -hmm. i didn't watch gladiator for a long time <clears throat> just because my dad doesn't like <laughs> movies where the main character you know it's i don't know he just he enjoys movies where there's a nice happy ending and with with uh, Maximus dying at the end, it was like too sad for him. He didn't like it, so he always used to tell me growing up, like, "Oh, it's a sad movie. Don't watch it. Like, it's, mm. you don't want to see that movie." <laughs> and so I didn't watch it for the longest time. And then when I did watch it, I felt as though him dying at the end was satisfying. Like mm -hmm. I said earlier, you kind of want him to die at the end, yeah. and it was like a huge. I think that I think that. I liked the movie so much because I went in with these low expectations and it really delivered way higher mm. and I was okay with that. And I felt like his death at the end was really good. It's yeah. like a very accomplishing death. So I always felt like, Oh, like I, I like it that he dies at the end. Like yeah. it's, it's good that he did. You yeah. Know? You can almost tell he has like a little smile on his face when he's like laying down at the end in the dust yeah. of the arena. Yeah. 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 No, I, I mean, you get the same thing in Lord of the Rings when Frodo leaves and it's like, it's kind mm. of bittersweet, but it's, Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I guess, yeah, you could even argue that the real ending of Lord of the Rings is like Sam going to his family, which is like a happy mm -hmm. ending. Yeah. It's like the cool one. Yeah. 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 yeah no, I don't mind if the, if the character dies because, you know, it's like, as long as it's in service to the story. Mm -hmm. and, then, and it also just ties things up pretty nicely as far as like, you don't have to ever worry about us. No sequel sequels. Or, yeah. Unless Palpatine comes back. <laughs> Somehow Palpatine is back. Palpatine didn't really come back. That's not what really happened. None of that was real. <laughs> Just a fever dream. It was all a lie. <laughs> uh, denial is a strong, it's a strong thing. We're gonna start a separate channel called "What Doesn't Inspire You," and we'll talk about those movies there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could uh, probably talk for way too long about that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'd better. I gotta pull us back from that. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's. Yeah, I even liked, I mean, just everything in the movie was so well done. I mean, just the, mm -hmm. like, I just love that he, like, stabs him in the lung or whatever at the end, you know, when oh, he yeah. fights him. It's just, like, such a perfect moment because it just, it totally, like, portrays everything about that villain character that you yeah. need to know. You know, it's like, he still wants, like, the recognition of, like, defeating Maximus, mm -hmm. but, like, he's never willing to, like, do the, like, put in... Meet meet life like a hundred percent, you know. Does yeah. that make sense? He's got to cheat it. Yeah, exactly. He knows he's not good enough. Yeah, so he's got to stack the deck. Yeah, exactly. You know, so yeah. it's like in in that moment, it just kind of like portrays everything about that character. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was great. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. But yeah, and I mean, even like, I mean, probably for the time too, it was like I'm sure a lot of those writing decisions were pretty revolutionary, you know, because it's mm -hmm. like. I feel like you had, you know, just even the idea that the whole, his whole plot to escape and get, gather his army, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, he's got it all in the works. It's all ready. Mm -hmm. And then like, I feel like in most movies he would be like successful escape and then come back and take the city, Yeah, you know, but it's like, it all just goes to crap in like a matter of minutes, you know? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's like pretty chilling because you're like dude this moment there's only like 20 left minutes left in the movie like how's this gonna end in like a satisfying way I know, seriously like everything that he's worked for up to this point is like just thrown out the window yeah and so i know like you have all this hope he's gonna escape it's gonna work mm -hmm. and then he gets captured and you're just like he's betrayed and you're just like crushed yeah you know and then it's like oh it's going downhill like he's just gonna die it's yeah like, he does that's what <laughs> happens it makes yeah. me feel like that's how the disciples were when mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, goes. Mm -hmm. It's like everything's fine. And then it's like, dude, what's going to happen? It's just you're crushed. It just keeps getting worse and yeah. worse. And it's like somehow he's going to save it. And it's like, no, he's not saving it. He's just dying. I'm like, what? Yeah. yeah. You're like, wait a second. This isn't how I thought it was going to work. Right. You're supposed to kill the Romans. Yeah. Hey, there's another Roman story. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, and then you have to like wait for the big plot twist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. Which is weird because it's like I always wonder like you know about their faith because it's like they were literally seeing people like raised from the dead before like jesus raised like two people from the dead yeah there's the like, whole lazarus story yeah actually three people because there was the little girl there was a little girl that died mm -hmm. and then like the jairus's daughter or jarius or whatever and then yeah there was the there was a guy being like a boy or a young man being taken out of the city that jesus raises from the dead and mm -hmm. then there's lazarus so there's three people raised from the dead. Yeah. Three. Three brain. Think, there's you'd, three. You'd think that, yeah. You know. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, it's, uh, how old were you when you first saw that movie? Um, I think I was like 17 when I first watched Gladiator. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Watched cool. Gladiator. Thought it was awesome. And then, yeah, I think I watched it several times in like my early 20s. Mm. Yeah. I can't remember exactly the last time I watched it. So since it was your favorite movie when you were 18, had you seen Lord of the Rings at that point? <laughs> yeah, I had seen Lord of the Rings. Honestly, I mean, I did really like Lord of the Rings when I was younger. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. I think I still, I think when in, in high school, I think I loved Lord of the Rings and I loved Star Wars a lot. And then I think when I became an adult, I kind of wanted to watch other movies and I liked gladiator i like some matrix i liked you know some more complex kind of different story lines that maybe weren't more of your like childhood kind of stories i guess and uh and now i feel that i'm older i feel almost i feel like i'm coming back to star <laughs> Wars or lord of the rings and again mm. i've gotten further away from star wars <laughs> but i've gotten closer to lord of the rings <laughs> to be fair i think star wars is just drifted away from everybody <laughs> i didn't leave star wars yeah, star left wars you. left me <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> the, the force is drifting away spreading yeah. away in the yeah, wind that's right <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah so yeah no gladiator is uh it's definitely a good one yeah it's inspiring to watch that inspiring from a filmmaking point of view mm -hmm. the portrayal of rome the portrayal of the characters you know yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always I'm always curious, like especially some of those like older movies, it's like they had less of a budget than they do now. Or I mean I guess yeah, probably it's not about the budget. It's not about <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it always just makes me wonder like what people are doing now, like as far as I mean there's still good stuff coming out. Like maybe Dune two will be good. Yeah, hopefully. Who who knows? But yes. so maybe that'll be the gladiator of our time. They're supposed to be making Gladiator two. Electric did you see, did you see that? <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what it's about. Yeah, we got Russell Crowe back. Oh, <laughs> he's back from the dead. It's CGI Russell now. I don't know, like the Irishman or whatever. Gladiator in the afterlife. <laughs> Actually, that'd be kind of that could be cool. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Zeus or not Zeus? So whatever. Yeah, he could be Zeus and Gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because wasn't he Zeus? In, he was uh, Zeus in the Marvel movie, in Thor. Oh, like was love, he? love and Thunder, the fourth Thor movie. Oh no, I never he saw was, that. Oh, it's not worth seeing. It's not okay. really that great. Yeah, <laughs> but he's like Zeus, and yeah, because he's well, like he's like I'm the real god of lightning and thunder <laughs> or whatever. And then Thor's like, no, I'm, you know, and it's like a whole oh, thing. Wow. And then Thor's like naked in front of all the gods, and like they're all whistling at his hot body. And <laughs> anyway, Thor and Zeus is like kind of this like plump Italian, <laughs> like Zeus guy, like yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do they get these actors to do this, man? I don't know, dude. Uh, I don't know. Interesting. Because I thought he was also, but maybe that, like Clash of the Titans or whatever. Like Zeus was play. I don't know. I think it was Liam Neeson that played Zeus. Oh, was which it? Is I don't wild. Oh, if that's a thing. But that's interesting. Yeah, I'll show you a clip. It's hilarious. Right, yeah, I'm gonna have to look that up. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> but huh. yeah, it's, I think that's. I don't know. Maybe that's all I can think of as far as Gladiator. Yeah. I'm sure as soon as they hit stop, there'll it's be like movie. five more things. Yeah. Don't be those Germanic tribes. <laughs> Don't do that. Right. Rome kills them. Yeah, they got pretty messed up at the beginning. Until way later in history when they come back and kill Rome. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Well, yeah, that was actually kind of another one of interesting thing was that like his character wasn't even Roman. He was Spanish. That's right. He was he was a Spaniard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And so it's like the guy who, you know, has this huge influence on Rome isn't even Roman. Yeah. Which kind of became Rome's story <laughs> throughout the ages. And mm. they got definitely got diluted and yeah, started paying mercenaries who had never even like seen Rome. Mm. Like he hadn't even seen Rome. Mm. And so it's like, how can you fight for an ideal that you don't know? Yeah. Totally. Like, like don't, yeah, you have to just take on faith that Rome's a good thing or mm -hmm. the system there is good or whatever. Mm -hmm. and it's like you've never been there. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, of course, you're going to just take your cultural influence and run with it. Yeah. 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 Too many mixing of uh, clashing cultures. <laughs> Cla mm. Clash of clans. Mm. <laughs> well, I hope that you guys go and watch Gladiator and yeah. that it inspires you and that... Uh, you enjoy not only the good acting and filmmaking, mm -hmm. but all the wonderful quotes. Yeah. Leave a quote. And uh, hopefully you're entertained. <laughs> all right. See ya.